Hello, you gorgeous Spurs fans. Welcome to another 8-bit debate. Now, as you can see, I'm in the middle today. I am the ref. I should work at Foot Locker. But we have the two opponents on either side. We have Barnaby Slater. You know him. We have Reese James. You also know him. And today's debate is going to be a furious one. We're going to try and keep it clean. Today's debate no is, chance. should Tim Sherwood have been given a bigger shot at being the Spurs manager? Should he have been kept on? Um, in Tim Sherwood's corner and saying four, he should have, is Barnaby Slater. Going against Tim Sherwood and saying, sorry, he should have been shown the door, is Reese James. All right, we're going to kick it off with the reigning champ, which pains me to say, Barnaby Slater. Let's go. Thank you very much, Craig. I'd just like to start this debate by saying in no way is my argument for Tim Sherwood here a thing against Maurizio Pochettino. I think Pochettino is doing okay. a great job. I think he's a good manager for Spurs. And I think he'll do brilliantly. But what I am saying is that I think Tim Sherwood's record denotes that he should have been given longer, potentially. And, you know, you've got to start really with the pure percentage facts, as he always did, which I'm not saying I necessarily like that he would be arrogant about it. But the fact is he had a 59% win, perce uh, win percentage for Spurs. That's higher than any modern day manager since Bill Nicholson. It's really that's, hard that's to a, argue with that. That's a point for Barnaby. That's a misleading. good win percentage. Stats are so that's misleading. That's a good win percentage. He only played 28 games in the Premier League and he lost 10 of them. Right? Do you know who the second highest percentage-wise, the second best manager in the modern era of Spurs is? AVB. Do you want AVB to have been given a longer shot? That's, that's well, a, that, or that's a Sherwood good, replace that's a very AVB good counter, because AVB, AVB is about yeah. to get us relegated? I, I frankly think there's something to be said for AVB having been sacked too early. I really do. He was he was very good in terms of getting us in a solid base. Yes, the play wasn't that exciting, but I think he would have been able to uh, bring that on. And also, we as is well the documented, the Reece, as sacked. is well documented, Reese, he wasn't given the players he asked for. He wanted Moutinho. He wanted. Uh, I mean, this is Jackson a different Martinez. debate altogether. One it point is. for Reese uh, for Reese for calling AVB good manager. Um, yeah. What for Barnaby? That's what I yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, you called him a good manager. Well, so I'm giving me, a point. I'm, give, I'm giving a point oh, to Reese for that. Exactly. He's not a good manager. In 28 games, I could have been the best Premier League manager in history. I have technically le never lost an international professional boxing match. Am I therefore one of the best boxers of all time? No. You're definitely one of the least good debaters of all time with points like that. That's absolutely That's ridiculous. a point to Barnaby oh, for being witty. I like Thank that. You very how much. dare you. Okay, here's my second point. He is a former Tottenham captain and exactly the kind of leader, winner, talker, says it just how it is, straight to the quick, that Spurs embarrassing. need it's in embarrassing charge when of Tottenham. That. They needed people. When we lost 5-0 and he came out with that speech afterwards, he told it like it was. He said, they've got no gut. Yeah. They've got no it's gut. It's for Barnaby. And, I remember that speech and, and clearly. I respect it. it. Yeah, yeah, and that it. is a negative speech. You're going to call our players gutless when they're already feeling ashamed and they're already disappointed. Yes. You're supposed to bring them back because up. All get the confidence back up. Not call players that are little old dogs waiting to be put down like Soldado. Call them all gutless. And that is him not accepting responsibility for his bad tactics, no. playing Kyle Walker at right mid against Chelsea. It's his tactics that lost us, and he didn't accept responsibility. Uh, he blamed the players, the most unprofessional thing in the world, and that just shows his lack of experience and his lack of professionalism. I, I, I take your point, actually, about Kyle Walker. I think that was a tactical mistake, but what I will say is this. How is that? What I, I will say is this. No. Those players who he was calling gutless have all been sold this summer. They've all been sold. We're talking about Kapu. We're talking about Kabul. We're talking about Holby. We're talking about those guys. Carl Walker was out of position. He didn't say he was gutless. He, made, he said he, all of them were gutless. He said all the whole team. He didn't name names. That's I think we all watched lie. the game. We knew who was gutless. We're talking about Kabul, Kapu, Paulinho. Yeah. The Tongan was bad rubbish. in that match. Okay, it's currently three they teams were all to be. I think, I think Sherwood had a case for calling them gutless. They needed to kick up the arse at the time. Go on, Reese, over to you. All right, you talk about, oh, he was a, he played for Spurs. He used to be our captain. He was a gooner. He was a known Arsenal fan. Do you really want a gooner in charge of our club? Yeah, that's a straight point. For Maybe Reece. that's why we lost to Arsenal so much under him I, and I, got humiliated yeah. by Arsenal because he was pulling the strings for them to win because he wanted them to climb the league. As you well know yeah. from last, you know from last week's debate, where I didn't like the fact that Jermaine Defoe's favourite player was Ian Wright. I don't like the fact that he was admitting to being a Woolwich fan as a kid. I don't like that. I admit that. I, I don't like some of the things, but I'm just saying that his things he did did make me think to some degree he was he was given a raw deal. For instance. You know, the fact that he brought through Harry Kane. He was the first one to give Harry Kane a chance in the Premier League. Yeah. He scored his first Premier League there. goals under it's Tim currently Sherwood. Four, four. And Harry Kane is now our leader. And I hate to say this, Harry Kane was once pictured in an Arsenal shirt as well. It doesn't matter how you feel as a kid. It doesn't matter who you supported as a kid or the shirt you wore. It's who you support now and who you fight for now. And he was gritty and in charge of Spurs and loving Good it. Good point. It's 4-4. Four, four. 
Okay. Uh, shall we go to part? Shall we go to part two then? Yes. Right. Well, so we're gonna we're gonna hold <laughs> it there. They've made some great points <laughs> each of them, but stay tuned for part two of the eight bit debate to find out who is gonna take this crown. Okay, guys, welcome back to part two of the 8-Bit Debate. We kicked it off. The question was posed, should Tim Sherwood have been